Hi, my name is Mary McCrossan. I'm a personal trainer. I've been asked by iDojo to put together a series of um, circuit training that's going to help in karate. First thing that I'm going to talk about is agility. Agility is the ability to move your body from one point to another um, in really controlled movements with quick succession. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just take you through all of these different things that we're going to do for agility. Just pointing out a couple of key points that are really essential to make sure that you are doing them correctly and that you get the greatest effect from these. These sorts of things will certainly help in your karate fitness. There might be things that you've not done before, there might be things that you have done before, but it's really good to step outside that circle that you train in and try different things. So the first thing we'll do is some agility work. Okay, so these little purple frisbee-like things are called gliders. What we're going to do are switches. So switches are just taking one leg going in front, one leg coming behind. Really, really important key point. So I'm just going to have Rachel come down onto the gliders. So you just have one foot in front of the other. The next thing you do is go down into a push-up position. Really important to make sure your hands are flat. So you're keeping your backside up towards the ceiling. You're not dropping your back. It's got nothing to do with your lower back. So your core muscles engaged really tight, making sure you breathe. So your rib cage is under pressure. You've got to learn to breathe in this one. Sounds silly, but a lot of people hold their breath. So all we're going to do is start switching our feet. So we're just extending the leg. The other knee comes up close to the chest. So it just puts a lot of pressure on your shoulders. So you've got to take everything down through the wrists. Keep your backside up. And we switch through. Make sure you don't do this fast, you do it slow, because this is the first part of the agility training. You've got to do it slow, because what we're doing is stretching the muscles and the ligaments, and then they're going to contract. So we're just getting a little bit of heat in the legs first, so don't do them too fast. Allow everything to adjust and adapt. Lovely, thanks Rachel. Okay, so we do normally 100 of those. If you need to have a break at 50, you have a break, do the next 50. So the next thing we have is a fireman's ladder. So we do 100 switches, and then we go through the fireman's ladder. You can go through fast, slow, high knees, you can go through sideways. I'm just gonna have Rachel go through, nice and high, and turn around and go back. And then we do it one more time. So there's lots of different ways you can do the fireman's, uh, fireman's ladder. So this is a BOSU, stands for both sides utilized. We can do things on the blue side, you can also do work on the black side. For today, we're just going to do a tuck, which is on the blue side. Now, when you're on a BOSU, you don't stand up on the top because it's really hard to balance. You actually just have your feet off center a little bit. Now, there's a lot of movement going on. When we stand on the ground, our feet don't move. We don't think about it. Stand up on the BOSU. You've got all those little muscles and ligaments moving. So in a couple of days' time, you might feel like you've got bruises in the high arch part of your foot. It's called foot fatigue. It does settle down. So we're going to do a tuck. So this is just a form of jump training. So we just stand on. All Rachel's going to do, she's going to use her arms. She's going to try and get her heels to kick up towards her backside. Now, as long as you land back on the BOSU, that's great. If you land on the BOSU and then jump back onto the ground, doesn't matter because all that compound pressure has gone into the BOSU, not your knees. Again. Beautiful. Also, it gets the twitch fibres, the slow and fast twitch fibres have to react really, really quickly, just like you have to in karate. You've got to move from one position to the next in precise movements fairly quickly. That's what this is all about. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do, we have a medicine ball. So generally, everyone doing martial arts should be able to do a push-up. Today, we're going to just make it a little bit more difficult. We have one hand on the medicine ball, one hand on the ground. So you do a push-up and you're just going to push that ball to the other side, take your time, thinking about depth, good control, so it's all about core. So I'm going to get Rachel to do it because there's a couple of different things that we have to remember. Right, this way. Yep. Hands down. Beautiful. So we push. Now when you're pushing, you're pushing all through the palms, your abs are engaged, your lower back is nice and strong, your feet shoulder width apart. Don't do this one with your feet together, so you want your feet in line with your hips and you take your time rolling the ball from one side to the next. Once again, rib cage under pressure, really got to breathe in this one. This makes for a really strong core. Thanks Rachel, excellent. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is boxing. So even though it's martial arts, the same movements in boxing pretty well mimic what you do in your martial arts. 
So there's all different series of things that we can do. And I will be going a little more into detail in one of the other sessions with boxing. But basically, it's just about getting the strength in the shoulders. So we're just going to do straights. Five, four, three, two, one. And then we're going to do hooks. So hooks is all about keeping those hips nice and liberal, just like you do in your martial arts. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, uppers, same thing. So uppers really engages the transverse abdominals, which is really important when you're standing doing carters. So uppers. Five, four, three, two, one. Nice. So different things. You can do lots of different things with boxing. Boxing is really good for your cardio, your strength training, and also just keeps all the hips and everything moving, your shoulders nice and strong. So basically, so we have switches, your fireman's ladder, your BOSU tucks, push up and roll on your medicine ball, and your boxing. So that set there, you would do once, have a 30 second rest. Then you do two sets of them, have a 45 second rest. Three sets of them, have a minute rest. Try and do that for a full 20 minutes. Work your way up to it. The first time you do it, you might only be able to do the three sets. But try and get so that you're doing it for a full 20 minutes. And that's basically our agility work. Okay, so the next part of the agility training we're going to do is more to do with shoulders and legs. This is called a travelling hover. Some people call it up, up, down, down, travelling hover, doesn't really matter. So even if you don't have a stepper like this in the martial arts place that you're doing, um, you can use a bench, anything that's stable. If it's not stable, just have someone stand while they're doing this, just so it's not moving. So travelling hover, have your hands here on the stepper, you've got to go all the way back, almost like a, a really bad push-up, if you like. So our hands go down, hands come up. What we're trying not to do is have your backside in the air and you're trying not to roll. So it's wholly and solely driven by core and your shoulders. So that's what we call a travelling hover. Then the next thing we're going to do is stage jumps, or this, this is a stepper jump. So we just go up, we land, step off. Two feet leave, two feet land. Both feet land completely on the stepper, nothing hanging off the back. If it hangs off the back, it's going to go into your lower back. Everything has to be in your legs when you land. You're down in a squat position, your bum's in line with your knees. Take a step off and breathe. So what you do is one minute of travelling hover, one minute of stage jumps, 30 second break. Two minutes, one minute break. Three minute, another minute break. So you can work up to as many minutes as you want for 20 minutes. Okay, so these are known as gliders to do your switches. Not everybody has gliders. So what I started with, I just got two pieces of A4 paper and laminated them. Simple as that. So two pieces of laminated paper will do exactly the same. Don't have access to a laminator. Most martial arts academies have polished floorboards. Use towels. Towels slip beautifully on a floorboard. Um, if you don't have a BOSU, not everyone does, what you can do is your kick shields or some sort of pads or mats, put two mats together. The whole idea is that you do your tuck but you don't land on the ground because when you land on the ground, compound pressure goes into your ankles and your knees. You just want something to cushion when you land. Not everyone has a fireman's ladder. If you can just get an ordinary ladder, great. Not everyone is going to be bringing a ladder into the academy. So what you can do is just get belts. Lay them all down in a line and get people just to step through the belts as if it was a ladder. Most people have a medicine ball or some form of ball that you can actually just use and roll. Um, that they're not hard to find, they're not expensive to buy, so you can usually get one of those. If you don't have a step up, just a simple bench. If you find that the bench is a little bit unstable, just have someone stand with their leg against it while the other person is doing the travelling hover, just to make sure it doesn't move and it's a little more sturdy. Other than that, push the bench up against the wall just to make sure that it is sturdy.